Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, because I don't know at what time of day you'll be listening to this. Time passes. But what makes sense of human lives stays the same. And I want to read you a short story by the great Palestinian writer Gassam Kanafani. He's a writer I admire very much. And in the, the last book I've written, not yet published, um, it's dedicated to his memory. He was assassinated in 1972 by the Mossad, the Israeli secret police. He was 36 years old. The story I want to read you, he wrote in 1955. That's to say, seven years after the Nakba, the great expulsion of the Palestinian people from their lands. Dear Mustafa, I have now received your letter in which you tell me that you've done everything necessary to enable me to stay with you in Sacramento. I've also received news that I have been accepted in the Department of Civil Engineering in the University of California. I must thank you for everything, my friend. But it will strike you as rather odd when I proclaim this news to you. But make no doubt about it. I feel no hesitation at all. In fact, I'm pretty positive that I have never seen things so clearly as I do now. No, my friend, I've changed my mind. I won't follow you to the land where there is greenery, water, and lovely faces, as you wrote in your last letter. No, I'll stay here, and I won't ever leave. I'm really upset that our lives won't continue to follow the same course, Mustafa. For I can almost hear you reminding me of our vow to go on together and then of the way we used to shout, we'll get rich. But there's nothing I can do, my friend. Yeah, I still remember the day when I stood in the hall of Cairo Airport, pressing your hand and staring at the frenzied motor of the plane. And at that moment, everything was rotating in time with the ear-splitting noise of the motor. And you, you stood in front of me, your round face silent. Your face hadn't changed from the way it used to be when you were growing up in the Shaiya quarter of Kaza, apart from a few wrinkles. We grew up together, understanding each other completely, huh? and we promised to go on to the end. But there's a quarter of an hour now, a quarter of an hour left before the plane takes off. Don't look into space like that, listen. You'll go to Kuwait next year and you'll save enough from your salary to uproot you from Gaza and transplant you to California. We started off together and we must carry on. I hear you saying that to me, I hear you. And at that moment, I was watching your rapidly moving lips, yet in an obscure way, I felt that you were not completely happy with your flight. You couldn't give three good reasons for it. The Ministry of Education in Kuwait had given you a contract, though it hadn't given me one. Later, in the trough of misery, 
where I existed. You sent me small sums of money. And you knew my family circumstances. You knew them in and out. You knew that my meager salary in the unless school was inadequate to support my mother, my brother's widow, and her four children. Listen carefully, write to me every day, every hour, every minute. Look, the plane's just leaving. Goodbye. Or rather, till we meet again. Later, the Ministry of Education in Kuwait gave me a contract. My life there had a gluey, vacuous quality, as though I were a small oyster lost in oppressive loneliness. There was a slipperiness to my whole life. It was only a hankering for the end of each month. And in the middle of that year, the Jews bombarded the central district of Sabha and attacked Gaza, our Gaza, with bombs and flamethrowers. I was going to leave this Gaza, leave it behind me, and go to California, where I would live for myself, my own self, which had suffered for so long. I hated Gaza and its inhabitants. Everything in the amputated town reminded me of failed pictures painted in grey by a sick man. Yes, of course, I'd send my mother and my brother's widow and her children a meagre sum to help them to live. But I would liberate myself from even this last tie, too, there in green California. Far from the reek of defeat, which for seven long years had filled my nostrils. You know these feelings because you've really experienced them. What is this ill-defined tie we had with Gaza, which nevertheless blunted our enthusiasm for flight? Why didn't we analyze the matter in such a way as to see its clear meaning? When I went on holiday in June and the assembled all my possessions, longing for the sweet departure, the start towards those little things which give life a nice, bright meaning. I found Gaza, just as I had known it, was more cramped than the mind of a sleeper in the throes of a fearful nightmare, with its narrow streets, which had their bulging balconies, this Gaza. Yet what are the obscure causes that draw a man to his family, his house, his memories, like a spring draws a small flock of mountain goats. I don't know. All I know is that I went to my mother's house that morning. And when I arrived, my late brother's wife met me and asked me, she was weeping, if I would do as her wounded daughter, Nadia, now in Gaza Hospital, wished me to do, and visit her that evening. Mustafa, do you know, Nadia, my brother's beautiful 13-year-old daughter? <laughs>